Welcome to my Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about why you haven't changed your life. We've all had this experience. You decide that you want to make a change and you decide, okay, I want to start doing fill in the blank. And you keep it up for a while, but eventually you're not doing it anymore. And that never feels good because ultimately there is a change you want to make in your life and it requires taking action steps to do that. But if you don't keep the action steps up, the bigger goal won't happen. Well, this book, One Small Step Can Change Your Life, tells us why this happens and what we can do about it. We're going to cover five things that you're probably not doing. But before we get into that, it's important to know that the reason why we don't accomplish or make progress on the things we want in life is because of fear. Whatever step we've decided to take toward whatever it is we want, if we're not doing it consistently, that means that when we think about doing it, it causes too much discomfort. And so we don't do it. We just do something else that's easier. Well, what if that easier thing was something that is still helping you make progress toward your goal. That's where small steps come in. You see, when you decide to commit to an action and you end up not doing it consistently, that's because you are feeling some sort of discomfort. And if you are feeling discomfort or fear, you have woken up your amygdala. Hey, this is a nut-free studio. <laughs> I'm with Kim. This is not a nut-free studio. Okay, back to the amygdala. This small part of your brain has been keeping you safe and your ancestors for thousands of years. It's also been keeping you from achieving your dreams. Mm, that's pretty sad. Wait, so we're alive, but we can't have our dreams? Okay, so when your amygdala is alerted, when you feel discomfort or fear, you go into fight or flight. You know this. And when that happens, access to your cortex, the thinking part of your brain, is restricted or sometimes even shut off. So the part of your brain that decided that you want to start taking this action is no longer in charge. And while you can use willpower or determination to fight back your amygdala for a while, you can't do that long term. It's just too powerful. So what do we do? We take small steps. Let's get into it. The first thing we can do is ask small questions. When you're deciding what action you want to take toward your goal or bigger dream that you have, you want to make sure that when you're thinking about what to do, you are asking questions in the first place, asking, not making demands of yourself, not telling yourself, I have to do this, I should do this. Um, those cause a lot of resistance. So what you want to do instead is ask yourself a question and the mind your brain really loves questions. If you ask your brain a question, your brain wants to play. Your brain wants to figure out things. Your brain wants to solve problems. 
So just remember, we're asking questions, not making demands of ourselves. Another key point is we are asking small questions, not big, overwhelming questions. The book gives some great examples, such as what is one small step I can take toward fill in the blank? Whatever your bigger goal or dream is, what is one small thing you can do toward that? And another example is what small trivial step could I take to improve blank? And yes, trivial. We are not trying to take a drastic measure and keep it up for a little while and then give up. What we're trying to do is think about what could I easily, and I mean easily, commit to doing every day or however many days per week you want to do that task. It really takes a hit on our self-esteem when we tell ourselves we're going to do something and we do that with the best intentions. But if we choose something that's just causes too much discomfort, we won't do it. So what we want to do is think about the questions I already provided. I can put them on the screen again um, and feel free to get a notebook out. Um, actually, that would be a great exercise to do. And you could either write down your small questions and then try to answer them and then make them smaller and smaller until you don't feel any discomfort. Or you could take your notebook, write down a small question, and then you don't have to put pressure on yourself to answer it right then and there. You can close the notebook and go about your day. And, you know, just don't forget the question as days go by. You want this question to be working in the background of your mind. You know, that's why we've all had this experience where there's this problem we're trying to solve or a question we have or something we are trying to figure out. And it's not when we sit down and focus really hard on it that we come up with the answer. Not always, sometimes that's necessary, but sometimes we come up with the answer while we're walking or jogging or driving. We've all done this. We're feeling down and we start asking ourselves questions and they're negative questions. Questions like, why can't I accomplish this? Why is this taking so long? Why am I such a freak? So if you find yourself doing that, stop and fill that empty space with a question like, what is something I like about myself? Hmm, that's so much nicer. And finally, for ask small questions, another time it would be beneficial to do this is when you want to get clear on what you want. Sometimes when we daydream or think about what we want, we have a vague idea, but it's a good idea to really think about in detail and ask yourself small questions about how you want that to look or how you want that to be or what you want that to feel like. Getting clarity on what you want helps you bring it to reality. Okay, the second thing you're probably not doing is think small thoughts. Now, what we're talking about with this is mind sculpture. And mind sculpture is imagining yourself performing a task. To me, this is the getting your mindset right phase and it's an important one. When you imagine yourself performing a task, just imagining it, not doing it, your mind, your brain doesn't realize that you are not physically doing it. That is incredible and that is powerful. What we're doing for Think Small Thoughts is we're not taking action yet. We are thinking of something we want to do that causes discomfort 
and it is something that we really want to do. And so instead of jumping in on the action, we want to spend time mentally preparing to do this action. Now the book recommends giving yourself 30 days as an example before you actually take action. So pick something that you want to start doing and just spend 30 seconds a day, not minutes. We're not spending five or 10 minutes visualizing. We're spending 30 seconds a day imagining ourselves doing this task, taking this action, and doing it successfully. You want to be sure to include all of your senses and really close your eyes and immerse yourself in the experience and imagine yourself doing a good job at whatever it is you want to do. If you do this, you will notice a difference when you start taking action. This is all about empowering us to feel like we can do what we want to do. So we've gone over the planning phase, ask small questions, and we've gone over the mindset phase, think small thoughts. Now you're prepared to take small action. Our culture has ingrained in us that change needs to be drastic and happen fast. But when you think about it, that's not really how it happens. The reality is it's hard to keep consistent with drastic measures. So usually we stop taking any action at all. So instead we want to take small actions and we want those actions to be so small that we can guarantee that we'll do them every day easily, very easily. While this is the step that will ultimately give you results. All of these steps are important. So keep watching because we still have two more steps and I have a bonus tip at the end. Because this step required so much preparation, there's not much more to say about it. Just don't forget that we're not taking laughably small steps forever. We're just doing it long enough to be consistent and feel good about ourselves and feel like we know we could do this forever. And eventually we'll just feel inspired to increase the increments. And you can go ahead and do that. Just make sure that you still don't feel any discomfort at the thought of doing that new increased amount every day or however many days per week you want to do that. Okay, so once we start taking action, we will inevitably run into issues and problems. And that brings us to the next thing you're probably not doing, which is solve small problems. When we're on the path to change, there are three times or instances when we're probably ignoring small problems, which could and likely will lead to bigger problems. And the author calls these moments blind spots. So blind spot number one for when you might be ignoring small problems is at the beginning of your path to change. Sometimes at the beginning of our path to change, we notice small problems or issues. And not that you should completely stop what you're doing because you ran into a problem, but you should address or tackle that problem Otherwise, you're not off to a very good start. We don't want to be so hard on ourselves or others that we give up, but it could be a clue that you're being lax about something now, and you'll probably continue to be lax about it, and there will continue to be a problem. Tackle small problems and move forward. Another time when people ignore small problems is near the finish line. That's blind spot number two. You think, I'm so close to my goal, what does it matter? Or I'm so close, I'm going to get there anyway. But that's not true. If you ignore small problems near the finish line, you'll probably get off track and you won't make it there. Do not get lazy when you get close to achieving your goal. And blind spot number three is when there is a crisis that is so overwhelming you cannot imagine how to solve such a big problem. The book gives an incredible example from history for this, but what you wanna think about is when there is 
a bigger, larger problem. Sometimes when you think of a smaller instance of that bigger problem, you can work on those smaller instances much more easily than trying to address something so big and large. And another circumstance for this could be those times when we feel like a problem is big and overwhelming, but maybe it's not. Maybe we need to think of small instances of this problem that feels big and overwhelming and tackle those small instances. It's just important when you're making a change to not ignore small problems. Okay, and the fifth thing you're probably not doing is bestow small rewards. Now, it's great to reward ourselves. I mean, who wouldn't want a big reward? But the problem is you don't want the reward to start being the thing you are trying to achieve. What's really going to make lasting change and help you keep your commitments to yourself is enjoying the process along the way. How do we enjoy the process along the way? By taking small steps. Okay, here we are at the bonus tip. Now, this is just a fun one. The reason why I didn't include it in the essential list we just covered is because it's not something that you can count on. But if you pay attention in life, you will be able to identify small moments. What does that mean? It means in life, be on the lookout for small details or small things that are potentially a problem, but they're not a big enough problem that anyone else notices it. And if you notice it and take some sort of action on it, seeing it as an opportunity, the change that could result could be much greater than anyone would expect. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And if you'd like to feel even more motivated to take small steps, read this book, One Small Step Can Change Your Life. It's filled with inspiring examples and stories. If you're interested in that, there's a link below in the description. Remember, taking small steps is how you become the person you want to be. See you in the next one.